Hi, Patrick Stockhausen here from takingstock.biz. Listen, one of the biggest problems that I hear from most traders is they think that they wouldn't put a trade on unless they thought it was going to win. And then someone says to me, well, why would I put it on if I thought it was going to lose? And I say, but you have no idea if it's going to win or lose. And they say, well, what's the point in putting the trade on then? I want to know it's going to win if I put this trade on. And I say to them, somehow you have the wrong beliefs about trading. And as a result of this, you're expecting something about the market that is not congruent with how the markets work. Most traders have incongruent expectations and beliefs that are not aligned with the realities of financial trading and investing. As a result of this, they have beliefs and incongruencies in the expectations that make them think a high probability entry signal would make them more profitable. They think because of the expectations and their beliefs, uh, making consistent money as a trader is a result of understanding the markets. They think because of their expectations and their beliefs that they're only going to put a trade on if they think it's going to be a winner. They think their system will tell them if the trade is likely to work. They look for indicators, thinking the indicators are likely to improve the odds of them winning. They think their system is designed to make every trade win. And they consistently look for systems that do that for them. They think the more they read about the stock market and trade and investing, the more they're likely to win the game. Listen. That is not how this game works. That is not aligned with the realities of financial trading and investing and what makes somebody a consistently profitable winner. So, enjoy this video because this video is about how your expectations and your beliefs are probably the thing, the number one thing that is conditioning you to do the wrong thing. This video is all about are you, through your what you're saying to yourself, your expectations, hardwiring yourself to lose the game and what you need to do about it? See you on the other side. Let's talk about my father-in-law, okay? Now, I'm married, a beautiful wife, lovely wife, father-in-law, very competitive. <laughs> Incredibly competitive man, okay? Now... I remember once I um, so there was a chess set in the kitchen and I thought, I'm going to play chess. I'm going to play him against chess. And he's played him before. I think he beat me one time, but I wasn't on it. And he was sitting, he was just eating his dinner. And I says, Charlie, do you want a game of chess? And he went, all right. So I got the chess ball and I thought, right, you know what, Patrick? Okay, just, let's just really focus in. I, went, I thought, I'm going to really, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. This, this is not going to be easy. I'm going to really focus in. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. I really am. And I just kept thinking, I really, I thought, right, this is going to take all my focus, all my concentration, all my might. I thought, he's a good player. You got to start thinking ahead, Patrick. You got to start thinking ahead. You got to think about not only this move, the next move, but the move after that, the move after that. Look at all his moves. Look what he's doing. All right. Um, and then started thinking, okay, if I start breathing at the same rate as him, I'll be able to pace his reality. Think of it, what his thoughts are and what he's possibly thinking about doing and all sorts of things like this, right? All sorts of psychological tricks. And let me tell you this. It was a tough game. But I thought, you know what? I, I just kept thinking about the same things in my mind. And I just kept thinking, right, let Nate to unfold, but just focus four or five moves and then think about what he might be possibly doing. What's all the possible moves he could do? And I won. Right? I won. I was so happy. So let me just explain something to you, right? What must I have believed to have acted the way I did? Here's what I believed. I believed it was going to be hard. I believed he's a good player and he's, and he's going to play to win. If I'm going to beat him, it's going to require all my focus. And I believe I had to think for to five moves ahead to win. As a result, and as a reflection of what I believed, 
I expected certain things, right? I expected, what did I expect to happen? To play a challenging game and for it to test me. And it did. I expected to play against a good player who was going to do his best to beat me. I expected of myself, every time either of us took a move, I needed to think of all the possible combinations of moves and to think how they would possibly play it and what they would do to combat it. And then think, if I do that, he'll do that. And I was thinking like five moves ahead. What happened? Well, my actions were aligned with my thinking. So understand this. I And I won. So we had stuff I believed. I had a series of expectations based on what I believed. As a result of what I believed and expected, I acted a certain way, which gave me a particular result. You got that? I'm going to say that again. I believed, I played, I played chess. I believed certain things about the environment and the opponent. As a result of what I believed, I had some expectations. The expectations are congruent with the beliefs. Okay? The expectations and the uh, beliefs are congruent. My actions are therefore congruent with those expectations and the beliefs. And they worked in my favour to win the game. So I won! I was over the moon and exhausted. Mentally exhausted, right? However, what, ha what does Charlie say to me? Right, Patrick, do you want to play again? Play again. Oh, Charlie, I'm tired now. No, 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 play again, play again. We've got to play now, we've got to play now. So I start thinking, all right, okay, 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 okay. So what happened? Here's what I believed, right? I'll go back to that. Here's what I believed. This is going to be easy. I won last time. So I know I'll win this time. I believe I'm a better play player of chess than Charlie is. I believe I can relax and win this now. I believe I must think about what I'm going to do after he makes after he makes each move. Do you got that? Completely different beliefs now because I won. So, what did I expect to happen? To win? To play a novice who was going to lose? And to think about my next move? My actions are now aligned with these beliefs. So, I'll say it again. I believed this. As a result of those beliefs, I expected this to win, to play against a numb expecting, oh, this guy's a, I'm playing against a novice. He's going to lose. I expected him to lose. I expected myself to win. And I expected myself to only think about the moves after each move, after each move was taken, right? My actions are aligned with that. What happened? What do you think happened? I lost. I lost. <laughs> I lost. I couldn't believe it. And I was too mentally knackered to play again. So look at this. In the first game, my expectations were aligned with the realities of the chess game and the opponent. I'll say this again because this is key. In the first game, my expectations were aligned with the realities of the chess game and the opponent. In the second game, my expectations were not aligned with the realities of the chess game and they were not aligned with the opponent it's kind of obvious where i'm going here isn't it right so here's the deal in trading if your expectations and beliefs are not aligned with the realities of the trading game and they are not aligned with the other opponents in this trading game then you will never ever see that upward equity curve your expectations and beliefs are congruent with your equity curve. So the question is, what are you expecting? What do you believe? Because if you're not seeing that, this is one of the key things to have a carefree state of mind. If your expectations and beliefs about trading are not congruent with the environment and other trading opponents it is impossible to have a carefree state of mind so we must align your beliefs and ex expectations so that they are congruent with the realities of the market this will enable you to do what it takes to become a consistently profitable trader you're not going to be able to do what it takes to become a consistently profitable trader if you don't have the right beliefs 
I could tell you everything that you need to do. You could read it. You could hear it firsthand from the best trader investor in the world, whoever that is. Right? But if your beliefs are not aligned, and if your expectations of what you're expecting to happen, that's what I mean by expectations, what do you expect to happen, then you won't be able to do it. You're acting based on those things. So if you have incongruent beliefs with the market, incongruent expectations with the market, the, then there's the, against the, there's the market's realities, you're not going to be consistently profitable. If you have congruent beliefs with the market, if you have congruent expectations with or of the market, so these things must match up the market's realities, you get consistently profitable results. So if your beliefs and if your expectations are incongruent with the trading game and its opponents, you will get in late, get in early, cherry pick your trades, not get in when you're supposed to, not move your stop when you're supposed to, or if you're supposed to, not even place a stop, not follow your rules, move your stop early, take profits early, not take a profit when you're supposed to because you're expecting or you want or you demand or you need more money to buy. I need to buy my wife a car, a coat, the bills, and all those things like that. You'll mismanage your trades and much, much, much more. Hi, it's Patrick Stockhausen here. Did you enjoy this episode? Good. Because if you did, there's two things that you can do right now to continue your journey. The first thing is, you can subscribe right here, right now, to my channel on YouTube. And I'll keep sending you on a regular basis, on a weekly basis in fact, information, powerful information to transform your trading behaviours and transform your wealth and trading mindset. Plus, you will get specific things that you can do to become a consistently profitable trader. And all you have to do is press subscribe right here on this YouTube channel to get that information sent to you every single week. The second thing that you can do this right now is you can go to takingstock.biz, sign up for any of the priceless free trainings. When you subscribe, you're going to get literally hours of priceless free trainings. Updates on my latest findings, what will empower you to create the results that you desire and everything else that we do not do on this channel. If you'd like to do that, just go to takingstock.biz, B-I-Z, do that now. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, empower your mind, empower your financial life, so that you can live your version of an inspired life. Take care for now. Bye-bye.